yes sir yes sir okay fine so uh, <laughs> let's continue from uh, where we stopped in the last class that is we defined what is known as jointly gaussian so can somebody tell me what was the definition what is the definition of jointly gaussian when do you say that for example you have a vector of uh, a random vector xn when do you say that this is jointly gaussian sir if it's all possible linear combinations are the gaussian correct right so jointly gaussian if you take any linear combinations right ai xi i equal to 1 to n right is gaussian for any ai okay so can um, somebody tell me what will be the um, um, for example if uh, ai or if x i okay x1 x2 etc xn or iid gaussian with zero mean and variance sigma squared then can somebody tell me what will be this of course it is gaussian so it's jointly gaussian but what will be the distribution of this of course it's gaussian what will be the mean zero mean zero zero right and what will be the variance uh, n times sigma square n times sigma square okay let's see how to prove this so what is variance of uh, this vector let me call it as y okay so let me call this vector uh, or uh, let me call this vector as x okay so capital x so how do you find this so it's expected value of right so um sorry not uh, i'll call this as x i'm sorry not this okay not this vector okay so this is x has zero mean so it will be x squared so this is nothing but expected value of summation over all i ai xi this whole squared i can write it as this times the same thing right aj xj do you agree yes sir but this i can write it as expected value of summation over all i and j ai aj x i x j okay so since expectation is linear i can pull this expectation inside the summation i'll have a i a j expected value of x i x j so expected value of x i x j is non zero uh, well if i not equal to j then x i x j are independent so expected value of x i x j will be expected value of x i times expected value of x j but expected value of x i is zero right so this will be same as for all i 1 to n a i squared expected value of x i squared which is nothing but sigma square times summation over all i a i squared is this fine this is how you get it you agree yes sir okay now um, so suppose suppose let's say you have a gaussian vector so x1 x2 etc xn is jointly gaussian okay so when i say jointly gaussian um, essentially what i'm saying is uh, um, you know um, it's a zero mean uh, gaussian vector okay is jointly gaussian zero mean vector okay so what can you say about um, for example if i call this vector as x Let's say this is a vector. Okay, so then what can you say about y is a times x transpose? So this a is an n cross n matrix, or in general it can be m cross n matrix also, right? So let me make it general. M cross n. Okay. So what is what do you think? So this will be what m cross one, right? m cross n times n cross 1 is m cross 1 right it's an m cross 1 vector what can you say about y is also jointly gaussian right why is that 
can somebody you take the linear right? combination yeah you take the linear combination right so check how do you check this you take summation let's say ai yi right or all i equal to 1 to m right you take any linear combination so what is yi i can write this for all i ai what is yi basically i'm looking at the i entry right so it's basically the i throw times xi right do you agree for all j um i throw that is oh, okay so just to uh, sorry about this so i'll call it as alpha i times uh, y i okay because i'll use a i for uh, a i j for the i j entry of a okay so this is i j entry of a times x j do you agree with this j goes from what to what j is all up right all up 1 to n. n okay i goes from 1 to m 1 to n okay is this fine so i can write this as summation i goes from 1 to m summation j goes from 1 to n alpha i a i j x j you agree now i have to write this somehow as a linear combination of x j right that's the trick so by definition linear combinations of x j is also gaussian right that's what i have to show right j is here and j is here so i can sum it over all i right so i'll just do this uh, j equal to 1 to n right now what will i do i'll take i equal to 1 to m is that correct uh, did i yeah this is correct yeah i equal to 1 to m you have alpha i a i j i'll put a bracket here times x j so i'll call this as some b j okay so i'll define this as b j so done the proof is complete because now why the linear combination of uh, y i's i have written it as a linear combination of x j's so linear combination of x j is gaussian by definition therefore summation alpha i y j y i is also gaussian right is this is also is also gaussian right uh, true for any for all alpha is right as long as alpha is are finite uh, there is no problem is this fine so mean of summation over all i alpha i y i is zero okay because expected value of y i is also zero because expected value of x i is zero right so in other words if you have a jointly gaussian zero mean vector you take a you may you do a linear transformation of that the resulting random variable vector is also jointly gaussian with zero mean is that fine any questions hello any questions sir uh, it is like sir initially we have performed for a single vector like uh, scaling by a sigma mm -hmm. so here here we are scaling the each term like x1 x2 x3 yes, and yes, so yes. all no sir yes yes we are scaling uh, not just scaling we are scaling and adding so here right? sir bjs are not a scalar i think it is a column vector no sir bjs no bjs are scalar right bjs are scalar sir yes of alpha is a scalar aij is a scalar uh, multiplying and oh, adding summation is there. yes yes sir yeah. yeah yes sir yes sir right, that's the whole point you have to write this as a linear combination of xj unless you yes, do sir. that you cannot prove that this is jointly gaussian yes, okay sir. let's move on so let's uh, look at some mgf so uh, okay um um so z be a random variable uh, with zero mean it's a vector okay when i say zero mean that means zero mean it's a it's a zero mean vector okay and covariance k okay uh, then if you look at the mgf of z okay remember how did we define the mgf its expected value of e to the power some vector r transpose z 
right this is your uh, the mgf okay this is given by exponential of r transpose k r divided by 2 okay there is a corresponding expression for characteristic function so characteristic function is nothing but the fourier transform of uh, the random vector okay so uh, it's an n dimensional fourier transform okay i'll leave that as a homework sir, but uh, well, well exactly same thing nothing changes except for uh, sign that's all okay sir as yes. uh, sir here k is a matrix k is a matrix yes okay so note i will just write this k is a covariance matrix okay in this case it's defined as expected value of z is a column vector z transpose is a row vector so row times column is an n cross n matrix so i'm taking the expected value of that that is called the covariance okay this is an n cross n matrix okay so let's call this as one uh, n rows and one column okay is this fine agreed is this fine okay yes yes let's uh, quickly prove this uh, what is the proof proof is easy right all that i'm doing is if z is uh, jointly gaussian with zero mean and covariance k then if you take a vector r r transpose z is what what is r transpose z it's nothing but linear combination of z right r i z i do you agree inner product right r i z i right this is also gaussian right? no? gaussian why because z i is a gaussian so yeah it's jointly gaussian z is a jointly yes. gaussian mm -hmm. so linear combination of that will also be gaussian with zero mean vector okay do you agree now expected value of e power r transpose z is nothing but the mgf of a gaussian random variable given by r transpose z right so this we have already computed what is the answer the answer is what is the answer so um, well uh, it's in terms of uh, yes but now i'll write it in terms of uh, okay so uh, so we we have okay so let me put it slightly differently so maybe i'll use a different color okay i'll put s and then i'll put r transpose z okay see r transpose z is a random variable expected value of e to the s times some gaussian random variable is nothing but the mgf of that gaussian random variable so what is that the mgf of that we have already seen right it is expect exponential of the variance of r transpose z right let me call that as uh, sigma x squared right s squared by 2 okay so uh, where sigma x squared so x is defined as r transpose z and sigma x squared is its variance is fine is that fine everyone agrees with this yes, yeah simple manipulations right now i have to find the variance of r transpose z so r transpose z is a zero mean random variable so variance is nothing but expected value of x squared right that is nothing but i can write this as r transpose z okay times r transpose z right or i can write r transpose z as z transpose r also right do you agree everybody agrees with this agree so no yes sir yes sir yes sir. yeah i mean inner product doesn't matter commutes right over r so now i can write this as expected value of i can write this in this fashion r transpose z z transpose r do you agree okay. yes sir but expectation is linear of course you need to check this i can write it like this r why because expectation is linear okay i can just take expectation with respect so this will be a homework problem you have to check this why check hmm 
So what is this? This is R transpose. Expected value of ZZ transpose is what? K, right? This is the covariance matrix. It's K R. So this completes the proof because all that I have to do is substitute this for variance. So and put S equal to one because what do we need here? We need Okay, if you go back here, it's expected value of R e to the power R transpose Z. But what we have computed here is expected value of e power S times R transpose v, Z. So I have to put S equal to one, that is sigma X squared by two. Sigma X squared is this R transpose KR. So R transpose KR by two is what will be there in the exponent. Is that fine? Yes, sir. Okay. Now um, let's do some extension of this. So suppose uh, I do some extension by saying, well, uh, I take another random variable, okay, which is basically sum of two things. One is z. Z is zero mean covariance k random vector. M is a fixed random vector. Okay. So now, what can you say about this random variable? See, this also turns out to be a jointly Gaussian random vector with mean mu and covariance k. Okay, so we'll check. So what is expected value of u? Which is expected value of m plus expected value of z. So let's assume that z is Gaussian zero mean and covariance k. So what do you think is the answer? What is expected value of m? M is the expectation of m. Only. So it's fixed, so it's m only, right? Oh, so m only, sir. Uh, plus zero. expected value of zero is zero, so it's m, right? The mean is m. What I'm happens? To the, yes. Sorry, here m is scalar or vector? Vector, right? How? What do you mean by uh, two plus uh, a vector? Then expectation of vector is vector itself. Yeah, of course. Uh, so okay. Yeah. Um, what do you mean by expectation of vector? Okay, so good point. Uh, so if you have a vector, okay, so x is defined to be, let's say x1, x2, etc, xn, okay, then expected value of x, the way I'm going to define this is as follows, it's expectation of x1, expectation of x2, and so on, expectation of xn, so this is the definition, okay, keep this in mind, hmm? is that fine? Yes, sir. Okay, now what is the covariance of u? So all that I have to do is I have to take u, subtract the mean and multiply it with the transpose and take expectation, right? So what is this? This is expected value of u minus its mean. What is its mean? M, right? Times u minus m transpose. So what is u minus m? What is u minus m? Z, z right? So it's z. Z transpose. What is this? Okay. So that means the covariance does not change if you shift the random vector by a constant term, right? Constant vector. It doesn't change. But the mean changes. Okay. The spread or the uncertainty does not change. But the uncertainty around some point, that point changes. The mean changes. Or the, uh, yeah, the mean changes. Okay. Okay. Now, what can you say about G U of R? Well, it's expected value of e to the r transpose u, right? This is nothing but expected value of e to the r transpose m, right? Okay. Times e to the r transpose what? Z. Z, right? So now e to the power r transpose m is a constant. So I can pull that out. e to the r transpose m times expected value of e to the r transpose z is what? e to the power r transpose kr divided by 2, right? That's something that we saw. So this is nothing but exponential of r transpose m plus r transpose kr by 2. Okay. Yeah. Is this fine? So that means the... Um, MGF of a Gaussian random vector with mean M and covariance K is given by E to the R transpose M plus R transpose KR by 2. Fine? Hello, sir. Yes. 
so this will be same even if uh, u is uh, gaussian with uh, mean m and uh, correct yeah that's what it turns out to be okay, okay. so uh, we will see why but uh, yeah so it will turn out to be that okay see because if you add a constant to a gaussian random variable uh, it remains to be gaussian but with a shifted mean right one dimension it's very clear okay n dimension is the problem but uh, by definition this is what so at least if you write u as m plus some zero mean gaussian then it's very clear but if you do that transformation what it results in is something that we need to uh, work okay is this fine is this fine everyone hmm? yes sir okay so now let's look at another point so joint uh, probability density pdf joint pdf for n gaussian random vector okay that means if i give you a random so let's say gaussian vector uh, what happens to uh, its density right that's the question okay so if you transform so how things change right so before that uh, let's do some uh, some simple stuff so suppose this is very clear right so zero mean and let's say uh, identity covariance okay okay what does that mean that means that if you take the ith entry of z and jth entry of z and take the product and take expected value you get zero that means zi and zj are independent that's what it means okay now if i uh, do the following right so if i uh, take for example uh, az so what can you say about this so definitely y is also jointly gaussian because i'm taking a linear combination of z that's something that we proved so that means i need to see what is expected value of y zero very clear but what is the covariance right so ky is what we need to look at this is expected value of y which is az times y transpose which is z transpose a transpose this is i can pull a out and pull the expectation inside times a transpose which is a k uh, sorry a what is expected value of z z transpose i i right because it's covariance of z so covariance of z is identity so you get a a transpose okay okay i'll do one small thing here suppose i replace this identity by k what will happen so everything remains same instead of this being zero i'll have k here right and instead of this being identity i'll have k so it will be a k a transpose right is that fine everyone yes. okay hmm yes sir okay now i need to uh, now let's look at what do you mean by transformation of uh, random variable and how does it affect in this case okay so um, <clears throat> so that means um, if uh, looks like at least if i take a zero mean uh, random variable or a random vector with identity covariance i can just multiply it by a matrix and add a offset to get some other uh, random so gaussian with some other distribution right so let's see uh, what does it result in so suppose uh, for a moment let's assume that y is um, or z is gaussian okay so let's assume that uh, z uh, or um, how do i put it so so uh, let okay let's start with that let z be a times w okay now w turns out to be w turns out to be gaussian zero mean okay and identity uh, covariance okay now what will be the distribution of z well it's jointly gaussian but what is the density we, we know uh, that it is jointly gaussian uh, by definition but what will be its density 
so any idea on how do you find uh, the density of this so if you look at w space right so i'll just give an example in two dimension okay so w will be what it will be w1 w2 right so this will be w2 and this will be w1 and this is the space and suppose i divide this into smaller pieces okay that's how i do integration and all that right so i'll just do these things okay i'll divide this into small piece so for given w1 comma w2 right uh, i will have the corresponding density density think of this as you know the density as some tend over this w1 w2 plane is that uh, can you imagine that so w is zero mean and uh, identity covariance so that means it's an iid random variable so it will be sent so think of as a think of a tent center it at 0 comma 0 here okay and um, a gaussian spread around this origin can you imagine that yes or no everyone can yes, imagine that Uh, think of a tent with a pole at the center right so that will be the uh, uh, gaussian random variable or gaussian random vector with zero mean and identity covariance that means the spread is also one okay now what is it that i am doing i am doing a transformation right so this gets mapped under a right so a to w do you agree or sorry z right so what is uh, what is the uh, what is what will uh this result in so for example um if you take a small square right for example here okay you take this small square and apply a to it so what do you think will will happen each point in this square will get translated rotated and scaled by something and as a consequence of uh, that it results in a what parallel pipe right do you agree yes or no okay so sir, let me exactly. sir it will depend upon a no sir how we are taking a transformation yes no a it depends on the matrix a yes but yes, typically sir. this is the picture right well i'm looking at very infinitesimally small uh, cube or a square in this case sir. this get translated to under a to uh something like this right so something like uh right you agree so this shift in all uh, the uh, the corner also it will be shifted uh, tilted right deformed basically yes any question yes sir sir sir, sir can you repeat this things once again ha huh, so you take a uh okay so let me start with this no, no, this part sir like you have said that to at the origin there is a unit mean and uh, sorry zero mean and unit variance how that is no no so what is w w is zero mean identity covariance so you know the distribution you know the pdf of w right what is the pdf of w it's gaussian 1 by root 2 pi huh? And yeah it's gaussian so each so w i s are i i d gaussian with unit variance right do you agree yes yeah, yes sir so that means the joint density will be the product density very easy i think we looked at that in the previous uh, class right i don't know yes right? sir yes sir yeah so ha here right see this vector here x1 through xn are i i d gaussian so that means identity covariance the joint density is essentially 1 by 2 pi power n by 2 e to the power minus summation over all i x i squared by 2 right the product density so that will be the joint density do you agree i yes, right? right so yes, you yes, agree sir. with that yeah so that's so i know the joint density of w provided its covariance is identity and zero mean that is where we start okay now what i am doing is i am taking w and applying a linear transformation to it a times w now i need to understand what will be the density of z right so it's a it's not really a question in probability it's a question in uh, calculus right so uh, basically how things transform and change of variables in integration theory right so now what will happen that's what i was talking about right so just to give you an idea so suppose i'll probably use this uh, last lecture so uh, if you have for example if you have a vector right 
So let's say you have a point here. Okay. Let's call this as W. Now under A, what might happen? It will rotate. So it will rotate, enlarge, it will rotate and it might uh, go here, right? So this is what happens. This is A times W, right? This gets mapped here under A, right? So that means if you take each point in the square, right? All the points inside the small square that gets transformed to points which are which correspond to a w do you agree yes sir right okay now um, how do you uh, understand this well uh, for example i can do the following right uh, i can just do this i'll just take this okay suppose this is the identity vector or the unit vector along these two directions right if I take this point under A, what will happen? It will be A1, right? What is this point? This is some alpha 1 E1, right? So you are scaling E1 to get this. So if I apply A to this, what will happen? It will be alpha 1 times A E1, right? So all that I have to do is to take the unit vector and see how it gets translated. Do you agree with that? Yes, sir. In each direction. So that means if I want to see what, what happens to this point here in the square, all that I, have, I should understand is basically what happens to uh, the ident the unit vectors under this transformation. If I know that, I can write any point, for example, this point as some alpha 1 times E1, comma alpha 2 times E2, right? So A, if I operate A on that, right? A of alpha 1 E1, comma alpha 2 E2, Right? This is what uh, you will get. Do you agree? So this corresponds to alpha 1 times A E1. Uh, sorry, I, I think I did a mistake. Uh, sorry, this, this is not comma. This is a linear combination of unit vectors, right? Alpha 1. So this will, what is it that I'll get? This will be sum. So this is nothing but alpha 1 A E1 plus alpha 2 A E2. So if I know what A E1 and A E2 are, all that I have to do is scale it by the corresponding coordinate alpha and alpha 2 and add them. So I get the corresponding points, right? So typically, when you take these points and map, you get a parallel pipe, okay, like this. Do you agree? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Right? Sir, but still, it it will depend on A, sir. Suppose if you are taking A is equal to the identity matrix only, then we get the same exactly, thing. Exactly, we'll get square. Yeah. Uh, you will get exactly the square. So what I'm saying is the exact yeah, shape usually, depends on yeah. the matrix A. But just yes, to sir. have some picture in your mind, a square gets translated to or uh, transformed to a parallel. Do yes, you agree yes, with sir. this? Okay. Yes, sir. Now. This is your uh, space, which is W space, and the other one would be your. This would be your, what? J space. Hello, hello sir. Z space, right? Ah, yeah. Yes. Question. Uh, sir, uh, if you take contour plot of uh, Z, no, sorry, W, it will be circle, right? Circles. What do you mean by contour plot of W? W is a random vector. What do you mean by contour oh, sir, plot? PDF, sorry, uh, the, I mean the PDF, joint PDF. Ah, correct. It's a circle. Yes. And then uh, the contour of uh, PDF of AW is uh, ellipse. It, will it be ellipse? Uh, the, the question, yes, but how? How do you say that it's an ellipse? Right? You are right. I mean, you are thinking ahead. Maybe you know the answer and you are saying, but why do you think that it's an ellipse? Because right? each vectors are rotating. Uh, but what happens to the PDF? Uh, you know, the, mate, the vector W got transformed. Okay, each vector, each, uh, each component got mapped to something. But no, sir, I, the... I, I, I add this in pattern recognition. So I was asking. Ah, so that's what we will address now. So we'll uh, at least intuitively see why this is the case. That's okay. Right. Okay. So now uh, this whole thing gets mapped to a parallel pipe. Okay. This is fine in the Z space. Now, if you look at F, uh, maybe I'll write it is a different color. The one that we have is FW of W, right? We clearly know the distribution or the joint density of this, uh, which is the product density, right? And if you plot, if you look at in this space, this will be SZ of 
z z is a the small z is a vector okay so that means you give me any point for example here i know i should be able to find the density of that do you agree if i take a point here fw of w so this is some point w fw of w will give me the density at that point right do you agree yes okay now um i'll ask you this if z of let's say small z dz okay well when i say dz uh, z is a vector so dz is a small infinitesimally small cube or uh, infinitesimally small area okay so what will this give us um, you know i have been a little sloppy here but i think uh, that's okay so what does this give us let's say one dimension what will this give us suppose assume that z is a z is a scalar so f z of z density times dz will give me the area sir huh the probability the uh, probability that z belongs in that uh, bracket dz yeah so essentially let me use a different uh, so if you put for example this is my point okay okay this is my point z okay so let me just use this this is z right f z of z times dz will tell me the probability that z belongs to this small parallel point okay do you agree so in this dz i think no sir this area ah, so it will be dz is the area of this parallel point yes sir. yes okay sir. now on the other hand if i take for example f w of w dw what will this give us this gives us the probability that this w falls in this square around w right yes sir but you, what can you say about these two probabilities no sir same same right why because each point is, is yeah you can think of this as an experiment where you draw w okay so you come whenever w falls in this small square you say that oh the, and you count that as one and add them and divide by the total number of times you do the experiment that gives me the probability that it, the points have fallen in the small cube right but those same points will get map to the parallel pipe under consideration so the probability that z falls in that parallel pipe is same as the probability that w falls in this square is this fine for a cube yes sir this will be equal right okay well uh, think i have explained but uh, you know you should think more okay now um, what is it that i need i need uh, fz of z right that's what we need so we need to find the relationship between dz and dw right suppose uh, let's look at uh, you know dw okay so how do you find dw so well i'll take a small square okay so i'll just write another diagram here it's a small square with side delta and delta okay so what will be the well uh, it's a cube actually not cube it's cuboid okay it's in n dimension so what will be the volume of a cuboid of size delta in n dimension delta cube delta n sir delta the volume delta power n right mm -hmm. so if it's a square it's delta squared if it's a cuboid the volume is delta cube if it's a cuboid in n dimension the volume of that cuboid is delta power n okay okay now the interesting question would be uh, what will be the uh, volume of this what can you say about this dz hmm so you can be taking w and applying a to get dz right i take dw all the vectors in this cuboid okay so this is the picture right this is the picture right i don't know if i have written this correctly so this is under a so i operate a for this cuboid to get this right so what will be the volume of this can somebody tell me 
so how you, you guys are taking linear algebra right so can you tell me what is the answer huh so volume will be same i think because it is only deforming no not really right so why do you think volume will be same if so because is, the area is similar, just... then you will get zero the volume is zero <laughs> right mm. Suppose A turned out to be a projection matrix to a lower dimensional space. So yeah, if you look so at yeah. the mm -hmm. geometry and ask what is the volume, volume will be zero, right? So not mm -hmm. same, right? Clearly not same. I have a counter example. So yes, what do you think is the volume? Guys, those who have taken uh, gate, right? So you should have uh, any guess, any answer? So determinant to the power n something multiplied with. Okay. So is it determinant power n? Okay, it is not square, then we cannot take determinant, yeah. No, it, it is square, okay. It is square. Assume that A is square. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think is the... Uh, yes? It's related by determinant, okay? As uh, Rishabh correctly pointed out, uh, the deformation, when you do deformation using a linear transform, the corresponding area is scaled by the determinant, okay? Is that fine? So in other words, dz, so for example, dz is determinant of A times dw. Okay. Is that fine? Okay. So in other words, if you look at the derivative of dz with respect to dw, it will be determinant of a. Okay. So now, uh, how do you end the story here? So fz of z is fw of w, but fw of uh, what is w? W, see, Z is A W. Assume that A is non singular, then W would be A inverse Z, right? So I can write this as inverse is D W. D, well, um, you know, there's a D Z also here, right? So they cancel, and what do you get? We get this, right? So now, how do you write this? What is FW of A inverse Z? We have 1 by 2 pi over n by 2, right? That's because you have product of density. You have root 2 pi multiplied n times. So it's 2 pi power n by 2, right? And you have determinant of A, right? So what is the determinant of A? So um, I'll write as is, so it's 1 by determinant of A, okay? And then what? Then this is exponential of minus, I should write, um, you know, uh, zi squared was the, was in the exponent or in other words, z transpose z, z transpose z was there. Now instead of z, you have a inverse uh, thing, right? So it will be a inverse z transpose, that is z transpose a inverse transpose a inverse z by 2. Okay? Is that fine? Okay, so, <clears throat> huh. so now uh, what can you say about, see, uh, if, when we started, uh, we said a is z is a w, right? So that means the covariance of z is what? What is covariance of z? It's a, a transpose, right? What is covariance of z inverse? It's a transpose inverse, a inverse. So that's what you have it here, right? So a transpose inverse, a inverse is nothing but covariance of z inverse. So what is determinant of A? Huh? Square root of this, uh, to the power of half, minus huh? of. 
Okay, so let's see. Uh, I'll write it. So the idea is I have to write it in terms of covariance now, right? The exponent I have taken care of. So C, determinant of Kz is what? It's determinant of AA transpose. What is determinant of AA transpose? Determinant of A squared. Exactly. Okay. Determinant of A squared. That's because it's determinant of A times determinant of A transpose, but determinant of A transpose is determinant of A, right? Right? So this is nothing but square root of, so this implies determinant of Kz is nothing but what? Determinant of A. Right? So putting all the things together, if you have Z, a Gaussian distribution with zero mean covariance Z, the density if Z of uh, this capital Z of small z would be 1 by root uh, okay so i'll write it as 2 pi power n by 2 determinant of kz square root exponential of minus z transpose kz inverse z divided by 2 okay so z is for all z in rm so this is the density okay so one thing is in this course you have to remember this particular expression i generally don't uh, suggest uh, anything to be remembered that i mean i don't stress that but this is something that is very very important you should remember this all the time okay any questions this is very important okay so which is so, statistical signal processing, communications, uh, machine learning, you name it. Yes. Yes, Sumit. Sir, in this process, sir, we have to assume that the this transformation has to be invertible, no, sir? Yes, yes. Like we have used the A inverse also here. Correct. Correct. We, uh, we have assumed that uh, A is invertible. Yes, that is the assumption here let's see i mean if uh, if a is invertible is non invertible what is it that you have to do it's something that you uh, we, we will see hmm? uh, okay so let's um, how do i put it so um, um, see what do you mean by so let's try to and i think uh, the remaining time i'll probably spend some time on this see if i take a matrix a and alpha a okay is this invertible this two cross two is this invertible no sir because one is the linear combination of another it's not invertible right yes, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. so if i multiply x1 x2 what do you get x1 times first column x2 times second so basically you'll have this times uh, this right or i'll write it uh, in a slightly different fashion uh, maybe okay i'll i'll write it like this okay a alpha again not invertible right so this will be a1 x1 plus a2 x2 this is one random variable right what will be the other one it will be alpha times a1 x1 plus a2 x2. So what is it that you are asking? You are asking, let me, if I call this random variable as y, and this will be alpha y. You are asking this question of what is the joint density of y comma alpha y of y1, y2. What do you think is the density? I mean, uh, these two are highly correlated, right? If I tell what y is, the other random variable is fixed. It becomes deterministic. Right? Yes, sir. So there is no point in even describing the density there. So just ignore that and just describe the density of y that suffices. Okay. okay. It becomes yes. vacuous. That's what uh, it is. So this I can write it as the density of y times some Dirac delta. So essentially, if it's not, uh, if y1 is not as, sorry, if alpha y, I mean, the second vector, second variable is not a scaled version of the first, it should be zero, right? It can never happen has zero measure okay so this is some pathological cases corner cases which we will not worry about too much is that okay yes sir okay yeah so uh, i think um, um, the, the next thing would be to just look at a few uh, concrete examples 
okay i'll just state this and maybe in the next class i'll uh, i'll write this okay so uh, is that fine so suppose you have a two uh, dimensional random vector okay okay if you have a two dimensional random vector so how do you write the density of that okay so let me write that f z of z again it's two dimensional this will be the big formula i don't want you to remember this 2 pi because it's 2 pi power 2 by 2 right square root of i can write it like this uh, okay before that uh, this is sigma 1 sigma 2 i'll i'll say what sigma 1 sigma 2 are 1 minus rho squared exponential of minus z1 squared by sigma 1 squared okay minus 2 times rho times sigma 1 z1 z2 divided by sigma 1 sigma 2 minus z2 squared by sigma 2 squared divided by 2 times 1 minus rho squared okay so i have to describe what each term uh, is so <clears throat> expected value of so z i can write it as z1 z2 okay expected value of z1 squared is sigma 1 squared expected value of z2 squared is sigma 2 squared okay is that fine hmm? yes. okay so now uh, i'll call so i also have expected value of z1 z2 i'll call it as k12 okay is that fine and i'll define rho as and generally what i'll do is uh, see k12 is same as k21 because sigma2 expected value of z2 z1 is same as z1 z2 so rho i will define it as k12 divided by sigma1 sigma2 okay so this results in a distribution which looks like this okay or in other words, if you look at the covariance of this matrix, right, Kz, it is of this form. So this will be sigma 1 squared, sigma 2 squared. This will be K11 and K12. Okay. This will be minus K12. And this is minus K12. Because K21 is same as K12. Okay. Is that fine? So uh, maybe I'll, uh, I'll uh, revisit Hello. this. or uh, Yes. Sir, is there any relation between... Uh, this fz and the uh, one we calculated yes yes so is this, okay is this see the the one that we calculated had this uh, expression this was the expression right yes, sir. so that means if you tell me what is the covariance matrix all that i have to do is find the inverse of that substitute and get an expression right that will give me the joint density do you agree yes or no yes sir, yes huh all that i have to do is find inverse of this okay um, inverse turns out to be uh, slightly complicated uh, maybe i'll um, see textbook okay i won't write it now but uh, uh, just see that so inverse will be like 1 over 1 1 over 1 minus rho square times a matrix which is like 1 by sigma 1 squared and 1 by sigma 2 squared on the diagonal and off diagonal you have minus rho by sigma 1 sigma 2 so that will be your inverse you can find the inverse of a 2 cross 2 matrix it is pretty easy right if you substitute that inverse in the expression for the joint density you will get fz of z given here okay this is complicated thing okay is that fine hmm? okay um, i'll leave this as an exercise to show this because uh, it's a simple computation and uh, the textbook has given exactly what it is so let's interpret what this is okay so let me write the exponent okay so i'll i'll write the exponent in this way hmm? um i'm sorry so the exponent will be minus of minus sigma 1 squared by sigma 1 squared z1 squared by sigma 1 squared 2 rho z1 by z1 z2 divided by sigma 1 sigma 2 minus z2 squared divided by sigma 2 squared okay so now um, if i fix this uh, this whole thing suppose i say this is equal to a 
and look at the counter what will be the counter of z1 z2 can somebody tell me what will be the counter that means i'm going to take uh, i'm going to look at the amplitude of uh, fz of z okay so i'll pick that as a some some fun, some some number that means i'm going to uh, you know cut the tent at certain height right if you cut the tent you look at the cross section the cross section typically will be circle right because you have summation xi squared or summation zi squared typically but if you look at the cross section now the cross section looks like this z1 squared by z1 squared plus and so on right so what what kind of an equation is this how does if you plot this what do you get yes can somebody tell me huh hello so is it an ellipse it's an ellipse right okay so it's an ellipse for sure okay now before you come to the next class i want you guys to plot this figure out so the moment you say ellipse right what are the two things that you need to well uh, you need to know x y right this thing this thing right um and then what else you need to probably look at the foci right these are the things that you should describe so think through this and tell me what what at least what this cross this this intercept corresponds to okay and then sir, we sir? Do, yes sir will it be skewed ellipse or a normal ellipse what do you mean by normal ellipse and skewed no, sir, i mean uh, skewed i mean uh, this uh, the axis is rotated by some basis oh you you mean uh, oh yeah so it can be like this also so you are saying like this right yes sir it's not axis aligned yes it, it that's what i meant so it need not be a um, proper uh, uh, the, the usual ellipse that you write it's a rotated ellipse yes uh, oblique ellipse yeah okay the uh, principal axis is not along x axis it can be shifted hmm? okay so just think about this and uh, maybe next class we'll continue and we'll see what this rho is uh, can we interpret rho in some way and then uh, uh, maybe i'll defer that interpretation of rho a little but i'll just give some quick idea of what rho is and then we will move on is that fine yes oh yes sir yes sir okay. okay i'll stop here and uh, in the next class we will look at more about uh, these these uh, gaussian pdfs etc hmm? okay yes yeah. okay any questions no sir no aish any questions no sir not no raveen no sir rishab and nitish no sir no sir okay okay then uh, we will stop um, there will be another um, homework uh, which uh, savan will upload soon maybe sometime this week uh, okay yeah so with this i'll stop